Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using the new ink blending brushes from the Stamp Market. I love these brushes for a few different reasons and I'll get into them all today, along with a few different techniques you can use for ink blending. As you can see, to differentiate between the colors, I went ahead and just colored a very small strip of removable sticker paper into the color, or I colored it as the color that I've used that blending brush for. These are the smaller blending brushes, and I'm going to be using these as more of a detailed blending brush for whichever color I need. And I bought the three pack, and I bought three of them, so I have nine total, but they also are sold individually, and they are a great price point, which is hard to find with these brushes. For my first blending technique, I'm going to be using this card that I made with their pattern paper for some inspiration. I'm going to be using four different Catherine Pooler inks in Eucalyptus, Shea Butter, Mandarin Spice, and Coral Cabana. These colors aren't dead on with the colors in the pattern paper, but I really like the feel of these types of colors blended together. This is obviously going to be not as vibrant or as rich as and saturated as the uh, pattern paper, but I, again, like the feel of these colors together. I'm going to start with eucalyptus and work my way up in colors. The great thing about these brushes is that the bristles aren't too compacted together. They're really nice and soft, so you get a really nice blend and it's easy to achieve that look. When the bristles are a little bit too close together and it's too dense, it's easy to see the circular motions that you make and you get less of a blend between colors. To create a really nice seamless blend, I try to start blending the colors a little bit farther away from each other and then go back in with my previous color to blend those in together. I do that pretty much across the board when I'm making any blending uh, techniques like this and I just want to make sure that I get the nicest blend between the two colors that I can. I'm going to use the two heart dies that come in the Sari uh, coordinating die pack and the, you, as you saw just a second ago, the two different ones is one just cuts out the heart shape and then one actually is double cut so that you get a nice outline. So I'm just going to make sure that I get all of those colors in succession in that heart shape that's going to be cut out. And then I went ahead with a white piece of cardstock and just cut out the outline. And I'm just applying a little bit of glue and using my tweezers so that I can maneuver it a little easier and just placing it right over the outer edge of that heart. Now I want this to be a card itself. I just want this to be a nice little note card. So I'm going to again take that die that cuts out the heart and just hang it over slightly on the very top of a scored piece of cardstock. This makes sure that when I put it through my die cutting machine that those parts that are at the top are left intact so it opens like a card. Then I'm just able to put some adhesive on the back side of my card front now, which is that heart, and apply it to the front, and there you go. It's a nice, cute little heart card. And you can use this just as a note card, but I went ahead and used the Sari stamp, again from the Sari stamp set, and just embossed that in white. I think it looks really nice, and it's a, just a really nice, cute little note card to give to somebody. For my next technique, I'm doing something that I really love to do. It's a lot of fun, but it's definitely a little intimidating if you've never tried it before or if you've tried one time and felt like you had failed. This is definitely one that you have to see all the way through to the end, and I'm doing a galaxy inside of this heart. So what I want to do is take some nice bright colors. So I'm using party dress, uh, flirty fuchsia, and limoncello, also in Catherine Puller ink colors, and just blending tiny little spots around the heart in different places. I'm then going to go in with a nice dark color, and I'm using a Simon Says Stamp black ink, and then I'm going to use one of those small detail blender brushes. Because this is a smaller area, I want to make sure that I get the details in between those colors, but that I also get the colors showing through. So I don't want to cover it all. I just want to go around those colors and make sure I sort of blend it out. I then just went ahead and made sure that around the very edge of the heart galaxy, I put a lot of black saturation just to give it a little more of a darker look. To create the stars, I'm going to use some gouache, some white gouache, and put just a little bit of water in that to make it a little more liquidy. And then I'm going to tap it against another, another paintbrush to make sure I get this splatter sort of evenly across 
this galaxy and I love the way that it comes out in the end. If you're interested in seeing a more in-depth tutorial of how to create an ink blended galaxy, I'm going to link my previous tutorial here in the top right hand corner. But with these ink blended galaxies, you really have to see it through to the end because until the very end, it sort of looks like a big mess. So I strongly suggest just carrying through and seeing it to the end. My next technique is going to be an ombre technique. Now you're going to see a lot of shaking here and I do apologize, but for the ombre techniques, I want to make sure that I get the most saturation at one end, of course, and then it blends into almost a white color. So I went ahead and used, I actually did it backwards. So I went from the bottom to the top, but I'm going to uh, die cut this heart out the opposite way. So the darkest will be at the top and then it will fade. And again, you just want to make sure that you get the most pressure and you add the most saturation at one end and then just drag that saturation down until you get almost a white and it creates a really beautiful light fade. For my final technique, I'm going to use a sunset technique. Now I love this because I can make this just a really nice background, or I can use this as a scene card. I have some hard times with creating full scenes for cards, so if I can blend a really beautiful sunset, I know that that will catch the attention. So I'm doing the same type of technique I did in the first one, where I'm taking these colors and blending them a little bit farther apart, just to make sure I can go in with the previous color and get it back together. And I'm using some really vibrant colors, and I'm going from yellow to a nice dark purple. And I used a bit of black on the very edges just to give it a little more darker feel, but I made sure that I did this with a very light hand. I used the hay dyes to create my sentiment and then also Dear Friend from the Dear Friend stamp set. To make sure that I got a good contrast on the hay dies there, I just blended the shadow part of the die the same as I did the actual heart, like a sunset shadow, and then used a white piece of cardstock for the actual word. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gotten a few ideas on how you can use these ink blending brushes. All of the links to the products used today are in the description, as well as links to my Instagram and blog. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.